Let's look at example 1 from chapter 4, Vapor Power Cycles. In this example, we are given a basic Rankine cycle. We are told that the Rankine cycle operates between a boiler pressure of 60 bar and a condenser pressure of 0.1 bar. For 1 kilogram of steam, there are 5 items to calculate. The thermal efficiency of the cycle, the work ratio, the specific steam consumption, the turbine work output, the feed pump work input. Let's look at the cycle in detail now. We have the temperature entropy diagram. Temperature is in degree centigrade and entropy will be in kilojoules per kilogram K, same as what we find in the steam tables. The rate saturation curve will correspond to the saturated steam condition. And the blue part of the saturation curve will represent or relates to the saturated water. Our steam at turbine inlet is at the saturated steam and it expands isentropically, that is heat transfer is zero from one to two. At the same time, for us significantly, the entropy doesn't change. The steam from saturated condition, you notice, now comes into the wet zone. Between 2 to 3, there is a heat rejection as the steam condenses to saturated water. Now, from 3 to 4, there is an increase in pressure from the 0.1 bar. Remember, the steam started at 60 bar and now it's at 0.1 bar through a Feed pump is compressed to 60 bar. So, in fact, we will see later on that the isentropic compression required to raise the steam from 0.3 to 0.4, that is from 0.1 bar to 60 bar, is extremely small compared to the turbine work output. Anyway, let's get on with the calculation. Then from 4 to 1, we have a heat transferred from the boiler fuel, fossil fuels, or which could be gas, or coal, or oil, until it reaches the steam uh, condition, saturated steam condition, just before the uh, turbine. Now, we start by following a systematic procedure for calculating all the enthalpies H1, H2, H3 and H4. So let's look at how we obtain the enthalpy H1 from the steam table. At 60 bar and dry saturated conditions, how do we in that indeed get 2785 kilojoules per kilogram? Let's look at the steam tables. We are now at the steam tables, in particular we are interested in the saturation conditions and we will look for 60 bar. So let's go down. And we have highlighted the 60 bar condition and in particular the saturation region, saturated steam. Let's highlight it.
As you can see from the highlight, we can get all the properties of the saturated steam. They are labeled VG, UG, VG being the specific volume, UG being the internal energy, H being the enthalpy and S being the entropies, all these specifics at the saturated steam conditions. And if you look at the third column, the enthalpy is 2784.5. Okay, we can either use this or what we shall do is we shall round it up to four significant figures and we will get 2785. Okay, so that's how we got the enthalpy at 60 bar and dry saturated at 2785 kilojoules per kilogram K. Going back to the steam tables, we record the entropy as 5.8894. Okay, some steam tables give it as three decimal places and some steam tables as what we have in our textbook gives it as four decimal places. So not to worry, it depends on which steam tables you look at. Since we are using 5.8894, we can use to three significant figures. And let us copy this into our calculations. Okay, you now can see we got the enthalpy and the entropy at the various uh, at the saturated, dry saturated conditions. Now, as the steam advances from the point 1 to 2, we note that the entropy doesn't change. So, S2 at 0 0.1 bar, now the steam is at 0 0.1 bar, is the same as the point 2, since this is an isentropic process. So at 0 0.1 bar, the steam is wet. Okay, how do we know it is wet? Because S2, remember our S1 is 5.889, our S2 is also 5.889, and our SG at 0.1 bar is 8.150. Now, this is significantly much more than the entropy at what we have. Clearly, since this is the saturated steam and our entropy is less than the value at saturation conditions, our steam is clearly wet. Let's look at how we obtain this 8.150 in the steam tables. We are now at the steam tables. A uh, relevant page will be page A3. And if you look, I have highlighted the 0.1 bar. And if you look at 0.1 bar, you can see to qualify to be saturated steam, the entropy needs to be 8.15. So clearly our steam is in the wet region. So for the rest of the solution, we will focus our attention on the saturated water and steam, this particular page called the wet zone in the steam tables. Now, if you look at our next calculation, the whole of the next section here, from this point here, we are involved in calculating the enthalpy H2 using the entropy to find the dryness fraction and from the dryness fraction we will obtain the enthalpy at the point 2.
Now, very quickly, the data which we obtained all at point one bar can be obtained from the steam tables. Okay, we got our S2, which is the S2 we have, minus SF, which is at point one bar, a property in the steam tables, which we will look at, and SFG. Okay, so using this formula, we will get the dryness fraction as 0.6984. Let's look at the steam tables to see where we got 0.65, that is SF and SFG for 0.1 bar. As you can see now, we are at back to our page a3 and if you look now we have obtained our sf value here and our sfg value which we have used in our equation now all this is 0.1 bar in the wet region so substituting the values and crunching it into our calculator we get 6984, 0.6984. Okay, now that we got the dryness fraction, we can find the enthalpy using the dryness fraction that we obtained. Now, we are going to go back to 0.1 bar, get HF and HF2, and we will get the 192 and the 2,393 from the 0.1 data. Remember, at point, uh, two H2 here, we are actually working at 0.1 bar. So back again to page A3, and what we have done is we are at the three columns relating to the enthalpy. 192 is the HF2 and 2393, 2393 is the HFG at 0 0.1 bar. So now we got 192, 192, 2393, 2393, with our dryness fraction, we are able to calculate the enthalpy at the point 2. Let's now press on. We now find the enthalpy H3, which is the corner point, the left corner point, of our temperature entropy diagram which happens to be the saturated water conditions and if you recall 192 kilojoules per kilogram now we are going to do a little calculation for the feed pump because what we have here is the work done by the feed pump which is to take our steam from the point three at 0.1 bar to 4 at 60 bar, we use the volume times the change in pressure to find the work done. Now, the volume, the specific volume is 0 0.001. The pressure difference is 60 minus 0 0.1 bar. But we cannot use bar, we have to use the SI. And what I have here is a little calculation to show that from converting from bar, which is 10 to the power of 5, we knock away 3 to make it kilojoules, remaining 10 to the power of 2, which is 100, which we can apply. Now, 60 minus 0.1 is practically 60. 59.9 multiplied by 
our 0 0.001 times 100, we move two decimal places, we get 0 0.1. 0 0.1 times 59.9 .9 will give us a value of 6 kilojoules per kilogram. So that now that we know the work done from 3 to 4 is actually the enthalpy 4 minus the enthalpy 3, we can now find the enthalpy 4, which is H3192 plus 6, which is 198. So what I've said here is all enthalpies are calculated, H1 to H4. We can now swiftly work to the end because the net work is equal to the turbine work minus the feed pump work, H1 minus H2, and the feed pump work is 6, so we get the net work as 915.7. The heat supplied is heat from the point 1, remember that is at the turbine inlet, we are assuming no losses, between the boiler output and the turbine inlet. Minus 1, minus H4, which is the enthalpy immediately after compressing the condensed steam from 0.1 bar to, point, to 60 bar. And so we have H1 minus H4, 198, and we get 2,587 kilojoules per kilogram K. Now, this gives a thermal efficiency of network over heat supplied, 915 divided by 2857, which is 35%, the base level in the basic ranking cycle. And you can see it's not too good. We calculate the work ratio, which is the net work, over the gross work. So the gross work is H1 minus H2. The net work is the gross work H1, minus H1, H1 minus H2 minus the very small value of H1, H4 minus H3. And you can see that our work ratio is practically 1, 0.993, telling us that the work done in compression is insignificant. 6 kilojoules compared to 915.7 kilojoules per kilogram. This is significant because in many thermodynamic calculations, we neglect this feed pump work. It's not zero, it's six, but when you compare it with 915, it is practically equal to zero. This is a very important distinction that you should realize when you're doing steam calculation. Finally, we do the calculation, the specific steam consumption is 3,600 over the network, which is 3.93 kilojoules per kilowatt hour. What does it mean? It means that for every kilowatt running for one hour, 3.93 kilograms of steam are required in the steam plant. This ends example one.